Springdale 270 LE or limited edition here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. The Springdale limited series, guys, it's a very small set of floor plans. It's sort of an in-betweener. It's not above or below a proper Springdale. It's lateral. Um, they kind of, they came up with an idea here. They built a couple floor plans and said, you know, if we put this piece of furniture here and that fixture there, uh, it'd be cool, but it's not what we usually do at Springdale. So they made a limited series. Um, she weighs 6,860 pounds. I love this big baggage compartment. You can get some big stuff in there. I like how it's a 30 inch wide door. You can actually get big like folding chairs in there. Um, but uh, what was I saying there? 6,860 pounds. So it should fall right within the boundaries of half ton towable. If you don't know what your vehicle can tow or you don't know what kind of vehicle to get to tow this, I have good news. We do. We, uh, we actually started as a uh, used uh, car and truck place before we became Michigan's largest independent RV dealer. So we have the knowledge of that. We actually keep specialty towing vehicles in stock. So whether it's a half ton, three quarter, one ton, or something above that, generally speaking, we got them here. We specialize in late model, low mile towers. Um, so basically we're set for all that and we do trades, financing. We can deliver this thing to your front door. You don't even need a tow vehicle. We can get all that stuff done for you. Um, what I'm going to try to show you are the areas uh, where I think the Springdale family sticks out. I'm not going to tell you how it has a toilet and a fridge. They all have a toilet and a fridge. I'm going to try to dig a little deeper. Uh, for instance, when we start to get down here, you'll notice not just an enclosed underbelly, but this is the stuff you can't see, is that it's also forced air heated, which is really nice and not standard in this class, but it is standard on a Springdale. How cool is that? Um, the uh, slide outs, you've got a couple cool things going on. In this class, a single wipe seal system is standard. This has a double wipe seal, and I can't get my fingers under it, but there's actually a, a C channel like water um, uh, like channel. I, I don't know why I can't find the words this morning anyway. That if water does somehow, like let's say it's raining like just like crazy, and you're running the slide out in, and you're pushing that water toward the seal. If it gets past both slide seals, there's uh, that, that extra gutter, that's the word I'm looking for, basically to run water away. They even add an extra seal below the slide, which does nothing right now, but it does everything when the slide's being towed. Little detail stuff like that, you're gonna see repeated over and over and over here. And really what's interesting is that's not just Springdale stuff, that's just Keystone at large. These are things that Keystone does on almost all their models to help prevent, you know, product failure. And their service records are showing that it works. Uh, per capita from any brand, I think we have the least Keystone problems of anything. You know, they're, they've just proven themselves to be solid and reliable. But it's, it's, uh, it's a hundred little things you can't see. Like this little, slide trim right here. Let me see if I, I don't know if you can see that. There, you see that little, there's a there's a channel, a track in there. When water w uh, wicks down this wall, it'll hit that, but water can't invert without assistance. Uh, so that little channel will cause water to beat up and drop instead of uh, wicking into your subfloor. And that's the kind of stuff that makes the difference. Now on a Springdale, where you see the darker metal, they actually use a 25% thicker metal. Why would they do that, naturally, is the next question. The reason is to fight heat expansion and contraction. Thicker, harder metal has a harder time wanting to stretch and, and to contract. So, where the wall meets the floor is a critical seam. You don't want that water failure point to happen right there, so they make that harder. Now, if you look up top, you'll see that they use really thin bands up top, again, so that it doesn't expand and contract as much and stress that roof seam. Um, it's, again, a hundred little things like that. Something else you can't see is where, like, the floor meets the walls or the roof meets the wall, they use hurricane banding. Um, if you've ever seen a house be built in some place like Florida, there's a reason it's called hurricane banding. Because, because that extra wind force that hits those houses down in those areas can really twist and stress the structure. So Keystone tries to uh, bring in a very residential-like quality to their trailers on the build construction because this thing goes through hurricane force winds every single time you tow it and an earthquake inside on top of that. Now um, currently at the time of this filming this is a little odd but I just this is why I want to make these videos to point these things out to you. You look over here and you're like ooh cool it's got a spot for a grill and that's exactly what it is. It's a spot for a grill. Standard of Springdale does not include a grill but it has everything you need to add a grill if you want one and if you don't just take that thing off, no big deal. Um, 
they have a little uh, mini outside kitchen over here because obviously you're, you're probably going to bring some kind of cook station. Although they do have that propane connect on there. So if it's your grill, if you add a camper grill, whatever the case is, this is all set for it. And what that left open, instead of a little two burner cooktop, which some people like them, some people don't, Springdale decided they're going to try to cater to the people that don't. They gave you nice countertop space out here. And I tell you what, if you had a picnic table sitting here, that's where like all your napkins and condiments and everything are going to go right in there. And then when you when you're done with it, you just slide it away. It's just very simple and cool. And I like the fact that they actually have drawers out here. If you're wondering what this little coil thing is, that's a uh, little water line that actually connects over here uh, and sort of like an outside shower. But what's really cool is on the end of this is a residential sized fitting. So whether you, any sort of like garden hose attachment fits on this thing, that's what's so cool about it. It works with anything you can get at like, I don't know, Home Depot, it doesn't matter. Um, also, your drawers are actual wood construction. They're not press board and particle board with a sticker wrap. Um, there's not necessarily anything wrong with drawers like that, but let me ask you guys, would you rather have drawers made of sawdust and beaver puke, or would you rather have doors made of wood? I've never had somebody say, for sure the answer is beaver puke. <laughs> Uh, moving on. <laughs> Wide stance stability axles. I like to point these out because they do work. People say, I don't know, does that really work? And this is the simplest illustration and instantly people go, oh, aha. Most trailers have their tires very close together. Put your feet like this and have somebody push you sideways. You're going to fall and you're going to have to correct yourself. But what if you stand with your feet shoulder width apart? Now you've got stability. That's exactly, exactly the concept behind this. Uh, the uh, I've had people ask, well, when you're jackknifing into a parking space, don't you push that front tire a little bit? And the answer is, yep, you absolutely do. The next question is, well, can't that be, like, couldn't you hurt the tire or have a, uh, have a flat? And the answer is, in theory, sure, but in practice, no. And I can say that with confidence because of the thousands of trailers we've sold to wide stance axles. We can skid them across not just dirt, but pavement. And we've never once had a failure result from that. So it's just something that does not concern me at all. Uh, the Solera power awning here, you can see gives you plenty of patio space. And it, it fully covers your outside TV hookups here, by the way. Now. This is an easy tilt awning, literally with two fingers. You can pull the awning down and pitch it. You can, and what's neat is if you leave it like this and you forget and you roll the awning up, it sorts itself out and then comes back out flat the next time. It's very, very cool like that. I also want to point out tinted windows. Not every trailer at this category and price point has them. Tinted windows give you privacy because unless you're staring right at that light, which you can still see only in a dimmed fashion, you can't see inside. You know, you can't see in that trailer. That also means that most of the sunlight can't get in there either. That's a good thing. It keeps your RV a lot cooler and it keeps your furniture from fading. We have a friction hinged door so that the door doesn't slam against the trailer. Again, in those high wind scenarios. There's something else out here I really wanted to talk about and it has escaped me. Hopefully I remember and we come back to it. I don't know. Anyway, let's move on. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, it came to me. There we go. The, um... Other thing with the underbelly enclosure, Springdale calls it their Arctic package, and it is a standard insulation package on these. What's nice is you're not paying extra for it. But this has a 30,000 BTU furnace. That is about 20% bigger than you usually get in this class. Most of the time you get a 25K, maybe a 20 on some cheaper brands. Um, most are going to be 25s though. So this has a bigger, heavier duty furnace. So if you are trying to extend your camping season to heavy spring and fall, bordering on winter camping, this is fine for it, which is uncommon in, in what I call a family class camper. Oh, geez, we got a lot to talk about. First of all, I do want to mention real quick, this decor right here, this is called Kona, which is Hawaiian for lady, so treat her right. Um, uh, <laughs> that means, you know, take care of your winterizations and put it under a cover. That's, enough, that's a whole other topic, but when you're going to store your RV, keep it out of the sun, the wind, the rain, all of that. That's another topic for another day as the narrator from Winnie the Pooh would say. Um, anyway, so super slide, but you notice we're not relegated to a traditional boring sofa. This floor plan has a theater seat, and that's part of that limited series. They did some different things in these. This is a dual wall hugging theater recliner, not unlike something you'd find in a Keystone Cougar or Montana. By the way, you hear a lot about Cougars and Montanas. If you add both of their total sales numbers up, you barely equal Springdale. 
Springdale is the number one thing Keystone's ever built. It's amazing. And that sits uh, directly across from this easy swing out big television. So you actually have a very uh, ideal, that's the problem with most bunkhouses. Most bunkhouses have garbage entertainment centers. They have an entertainment center where you have to sit here and crank your neck sideways. This does not have that problem because whoosh, bang, right there. And notice the TV swings out and it can actually swing out pretty aggressively. I haven't really done very much with it there. So if you're sitting over here at this dinette, there's still no bad seat in the house. Case in point, let me have a seat. Ah, look at that. It's time for SpongeBob and cereal, kids. Um, AM, FM, CD, DVD, Bluetooth player, which is not uncommon anymore, so we're going to keep on rolling past that. Something I do like, you know, another thing about these swing arms I don't talk about enough, you can actually get to the plugs behind the TV this way. Now, I mentioned outside TV mount. This entire TV dismounts. This whole swing arm lifts. So the TV goes outside, and even outside the TV can pivot different directions for easy campsite viewing. Um, something a lot of bunkhouses lack is a place to keep your clothes. And uh, this one does a pretty good job of giving you just enough to get through a good weekend. Behind the outside kitchen, they have what I call the, uh, the coffin storage. Um, you can get to it from the top, too, if you lift the bunk up. So, you know, it's not hard to get there. Pretty traditional double over double bed. Uh, 300 pounds per sleeping space capacity, so you're good there. And I do like... This is stuff to look at, guys. You see how there's lights and ventilating windows by both bunks. Those are expensive things. Um, I've seen, uh, we've carried some, the Dollar Cheaper brands. We don't anymore, which there's nothing wrong with Dollar Cheaper. There's a place for that in the market. But personally, if it were me, I'd rather have the airflow. I'd rather have the light. And lights and windows are actually the two most expensive total cost things in an RV. If you total up the cost of all the windows and lights, they're the most expensive things in this camper. Because they're components that if they were cheap would break and fail and that would make you upset. So they have to use really good lights and windows so that doesn't happen. Now you may have noticed, I'm not using a fisheye lens, the, the roof is vaulted. It's got a six inch arch. So it's what, six foot, 10 inches at the apex. What that means is that a big guy like me standing here in the shower by the shower head has just enough room up here instead of having to do the whole you know, duck thing. I can actually get in here no problem. Bathroom is minimal, but you didn't exactly buy a camper to sit in the bathroom to read War and Peace or something like that now, did you? You know, we're not really brushing up on our Tulstoyevsky here in the Keystone Springdale. Is anybody even with me at this point? I'm just rambling. Um, looking around. what uh, This is actually interesting. They did something here that you don't see very much. It's a carpetless main deck. There's the little bit of carpet flap in the slide out. And the reason that they did that, this is kind of one of those limited series things. The slide outs are actually built in a different sort of thing from the uh, the rest of the trailer. In a sense, the slide outs have their own miniature travel trailer production line, and then they're married into these at one point. Think of like two streams that fork into one river. That's exactly how RVs are built. Um, so that's why there's a little carpet here, but none here. I would like it if it was totally carpetless, but um, you know it, that doesn't fit within their production schemes at this point. That's one of those... Uh, you know, we, we dream to do that sort of things, but we're not quite there yet. Um, centralized heating, remember that bigger furnace? Centralized AC with all the nice LED lighting, keep it bright in here. Obviously the dinette folds into a sleeper, uh, though in a bunkhouse like that, I mean, if you're sleeping more than six, you might need to do it. Short of that, you're gonna be just fine here. I also like that they have the nice USB charge plugs everywhere because, you know, like I've got the, the phone in my pocket, I've got the little smart watch on my wrist here. I've, I, I'm, I'm swimming in the need for USB stuff, you know? Um, the, uh, I, I think we covered that. Let's move on. I'm, I'm rambling again. It's early and I'm not quite woke up, so pardon me. Nice space for a trash can down here. But what's interesting is if you don't want it there or you want one right by the entry door, you can do that too. So they really didn't waste any space. I've had someone say, oh, this only has one drawer. No, it has one normal drawer. Then it has two supersized drawers. You just got to walk around the corner. And if I'm standing here, I can reach this drawer. It's not like it's difficult or convoluted or out of the way. We have double appliance outlets, one on each side of that very large breeze-through window. Breeze-through windows are one of those things that you cannot ever get enough of, guys. The air conditioning is nice, but you don't want to run it full time. You know, there's times where you want that fresh airflow. Um, 
I like the stainless appliance bundle that we got going on here. And by the way, this is a 17% larger uh, refrigerator freezer. This is a seven cubic foot instead of a six. Um, it's just one of those extra little nudge things that you can get in the Springdale family. Now your cabinetry is all pocket screwed together. Um, you see those commercials, Craig Jigs are helping people save money. Well, that's how this is built up front. Uh, you don't have to rebuild these cabinets. They're built right the first time. The other thing that's nice on the cabinets, this is a small detail thing, and it's hard. I can't really like demonstrate it, but they purposely cut this insert small, just slightly, like millimeters too small. And then they put these little Teflon glides in here. And the reason being is so that in transit, this door can bounce around. But secondly, heat expansion and contraction. Remember that. That's one of the number one enemies of RVs, guys. We don't think about it every day because our homes are climate controlled. They don't go through heat expansion and contraction like the interior of an RV. But on most of the time, the RV is not climate controlled. So they have to do these extra little things. Most brands don't. This is the and, and you can't see this stuff. If I didn't tell you about the Teflon glides and the doors, chances are 99.9% percent of you wouldn't know they're there but it's the reason that springdale cabinet doors don't split at the seams over time they just hold together criticism on this floor plan i heard once was it has no pantry space and i said you just need to turn around because you're swimming in it and what i like is that it's a wide pantry not a thin deep toothpick pantry but wide and it is deep enough you can actually get real stuff in there you can see that it goes past my uh past my wrist right there that's i don't know eight inches i mean that's that's plenty little spot to, on the boot bench here to sit down and I, I like the double tiered shoe garage that's a nice way to keep all of the shoes from piling up in front of the door where you're going to trip and fall and break your neck and i hope that doesn't happen um coat claw or coat rack you know nice place to have them and a private bedroom which is something most bunk houses lack we've got a nice sliding pocket door for a private front bedroom up here with headboard outlets so uh mom and dad grandpa and grandma boys and girls children of all ages if you need cpap machines you got them or again you got the all the device charging stuff you know you need those um little laundry chute it's not the end of the world. This is not like the reason to buy a Springdale. Oh my God, it's got a laundry chute, everybody. But it gives you just an easy, convenient thing. Because after you're done camping, you had a lot of fun, but you had to drive home and you're tired from the drive. Um, you know, so it's nice to just be able to grab the laundry basket from that bigger, wider baggage store I talked about, take it inside and then unload the camper tomorrow. That's what's nice about this. The simplicity, ease, the... I don't know, family-friendly, fun features of it. So give us a call. If you're looking for just a very solid, reliable, like, infantry soldier, um, you know, bunkhouse family camper, something that's going to last you. Like, you're looking for something that'll be like 8 to 10 years, and then you're going to swap it out for the couple's camper. Guys, Springdale's an absolute ace brand for that. You're definitely, definitely barking up the right tree. So give us a call. 800-256-5196. Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. Take care. Stay safe. Have fun and happy camping, everyone.